Today, let's talk about how I learned to stop worrying and love the 3D printer. Hey there, Philip here from Manning the Fort, and as I record this in mid-August of 2022, I have recently purchased a resin 3D printer after quite a while of hesitating about getting one. And I want to talk to you about what caused me to change my mind. Now, I know it's going to be a pretty common question, so what I bought is an Anycubic Photon Mono 4K and I am primarily using the Anycubic Eco plant-based resin for reasons that I'll get into here in just a couple of minutes. And yes, I did buy the printer. Uh, it was not given to me as a promo or anything like that. I bought it with my own money, uh, and yeah, I want to talk about it. Now, for a long time, I held off on buying a 3D printer, and there were a lot of reasons for that. Uh, one of them was that the quality and price point of the commercial-grade 3D printers just wasn't really where I wanted it to be. That seemingly has changed. The Mono 4K cost me under $200. Anycubic was running some kind of promo or sale, so I paid less than $200 for this printer, and I am very pleased with the quality that the 4K puts out. All told, with cleaning supplies, UV light, all that stuff, I probably spent closer to $300, but that's literally everything I need to go from nothing to being able to print my own miniatures. And like I said, the quality is finally there, at least to my standards. I used to see pictures online all the time of stuff that people had 3D printed, and I'm like, no, that's nice, but the layer lines were really visible, and a lot of the time the resolution quality just wasn't there. But, as you can probably see on the screen right now, uh, those days are behind us, and what you can get out of an inexpensive consumer-grade machine is about as good as what you'd get from a lot of companies that produce these things. The resin itself, I think I paid $25 for a kilogram of the stuff, and uh, my printer has been going almost nonstop for the week and a half or so that I've owned it at this point, and I think I've used half the bottle, uh, but I have printed a few dozen miniatures, including some pretty big ones. Uh, there was a giant lizard guy with a rocket launcher on his shoulder. There is, from One Page Rules, there's also the One Page Rules answer to the Juggernauts of Corn, uh, and those are pretty beefy models. I'm even starting to work on, in fact, I've got it right here, I'm starting to print a spaceship for my five parsecs from home crew, and when it's done, this thing's gonna be a foot long. Uh, now, by the time I'm done with that, I probably will be about through that first bottle of resin, but it's pretty inexpensive, and I'm impressed with how far it goes. So that's cost. The second reason that I was hesitant to get a 3D printer for a long time is that I live in a small house. Uh, in fact, it's so small that I can't set up the tripod and have the printing station going at the same time, so you won't be getting any time lapses or anything like that in the near future. But the reason that my small house was a concern was I had heard that 3D printing with resin is smelly, it's noisy, and everything you use in the process is highly toxic. The smell thing was important to me. My fiance is very sensitive to strong odors, and it was after finally tracking down enough reviews of the Anycubic Eco resin from people who have similar issues with smells that said that you basically can't smell it more than a couple of feet away. And I can tell you that that's largely true. I have my printer set up here in the loft where I also do my filming, and uh, my fiance hasn't complained about the smell once. She says she cannot smell it 10 feet away downstairs. Now, calling the resin Eco resin, I'm, it's a marketing thing, I get it, but that doesn't diminish the fact that it is indeed highly toxic stuff when uncured, uh, and I don't imagine it's great for the environment. Uh, so disposing of it is going to be an issue just like it is with a lot of other resins. Now let's talk about noise. The Anycubic Photon Mono 4K makes noise as it's printing. Mostly that's the motor that moves the build plate up and down while the miniature is being printed. Um, I, if it has a fan, it's either extremely quiet or hasn't come on while I've been paying attention, because I don't notice any fan noise. But there is a sort of rhythmic boop, boop, as it moves things up and down. Um, there are some solutions to that. I put it on a rubber mat, and I closed the door to the loft, and you can't hear it anywhere else in the house anymore. Now, what is unavoidably smelly about the whole process is cleaning your prints. Um, the most common thing people use is isopropyl alcohol, high-grade isopropyl alcohol, like 90 plus percent, 
Um, you can use denatured alcohol. I've seen that some people use acetone. There are some household cleaners that people use. The point is, you have to use a pretty powerful cleaning solvent, and most of those smell pretty bad. That can't be avoided. Um, I do tend to try to remember to wear a respirator whenever I'm handling any of this stuff, and always, always, always wear gloves. It is not good for your skin. Uh, wear safety glasses, too. Now, let's get to the third reason that I held off for so long on getting a 3D printer. A phrase I heard a lot, and I still hear, is, oh, well, it's basically picking up another hobby, implying that there's a lot of time that goes into making sure that your printing process actually works. And I don't think that's super true anymore. Certainly, there is a learning curve when it comes to calibrating uh, your printer, the exposure times. You gotta make sure the build plate is leveled. I moved the printer after the first day using it, forgot to re-level the build plate, and it did result in some failed prints. But, realized by mistake, re-leveled the plate, and it's fine. And the software that we use now is doing a lot of the work for you. I use Lychee. Uh, and I've had no problems with it as a slicer. It does everything you need. One thing that's interesting about it, uh, and I don't know how long this has been around, but people, other users, can upload the settings that they use with their specific printer and resin. Well, Anycubic is a popular brand, so settings for the Mono 4K with the Eco resin were fairly easy to find. This method of crowdsourcing your calibration settings beats the heck out of searching Reddit. Most things beat the heck out of Reddit. Exposure time, at least after leveling the build plate, is probably the most important thing that you need to calibrate for your given printer, but again, there are plenty of good guides out there that combined with crowdsourced settings, it makes it a lot easier than it was even just a couple of years ago. All in all, I'm glad that I was able to get over my apprehension about buying a 3D printer. It truly, I think, is the next step in democratizing tabletop miniature gaming. Um, I have access to make just about anything I want at this point. And again, I can tell you, as someone who has been buying tabletop miniatures for a quarter century at this point, that we are in a place where the price and the quality have intersected. If you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribed to the channel. Uh, this morning, I was thrilled to wake up and find that I have passed 2,500 subscribers. So thank you to everyone who has stuck around so far, and there's gonna be a lot more content to come. I should mention also, I am getting ready to launch a Patreon, and there will be kind of introductory level tiers in there that are a little bit cheaper than tiers will be down the road. Uh, but I do wanna make it very clear None of my content at this point will be paywalled. I do not have any plans to put patron exclusive content. What you will get is you'll get the content a little bit earlier. You'll get the thank yous at the end of the videos, the sort of thing you're used to seeing on YouTube. So if you're at all interested in supporting the channel monetarily, then uh, you can head over to Patreon. I don't know that it'll be launched by the time this video goes up, but it might be. Also, YouTube allows super thanks and things like that if you just want to toss me a few bucks one time. If you're interested in more content, why not check out this video where I take a look at five parsecs from home. I'm pretty excited about getting to play five parsecs. The printer has been doing a lot of work building up my crew and uh, even the spaceship at this point, and I've got something pretty special in the works. So make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to see that when it comes out. Until next time, seize the means of production and thanks for watching.